arpeggios. <laughs> Welcome to the Saxophone Oracle. Today I'm going to share with you two arpeggio exercises or chord exercises. These are fantastic technique exercises. I wanted to share them with you because I found them to be particularly helpful over the years with my own saxophone development. Um, I've been doing them for a long time. I will continue to do them for a long time. And yeah, I think they're just fantastic. Um, so the first one I'm going to demonstrate is a triad exercise. Um, yeah, so I'll demonstrate it and then we'll talk about what's happening. <laughs> Okay, so, oh, I'm kind of out of breath. Um, that's a really difficult exercise. And so basically what I was doing is going up and down the major triad, up and down the minor triad, up and down the diminished chord, and up and down the augmented triad, all off of the same uh, tonic note. Um, so one thing I really like about it, as opposed to when we regularly do you know, an arpeggio exercise, usually we focus on just major or just minor, right? We do something like this. Going around the cycle of, of fourths or fifths, or we do it chromatically, or however we want to do it. But, um, so there you're just working on one sound, and sometimes it becomes rote. In here, we're really looking at the relationship between the key center itself, right? So if we're starting in D, minor, D, then we have D major, D minor, D diminished, D augmented. And so those triads are uh, the basis for everything chordal, right? Um, so we're training our ears to the subtle differences or not so subtle differences. It's also really demanding, at least I need to think a lot right? Uh, it's, it's not by rote. I'm always thinking what's coming next, what's coming next. So it's engaging the ears, it's in focusing on the key centers itself, and uh, it really keeps you thinking. So it's a, a really interesting exercise, challenging and beneficial. There's a couple other things I like about this triad exercise as well. So obviously there's the technical benefits. Um, the other thing you noticed, I was playing with the metronome. I think we should be doing everything with a metronome, obviously, especially if it has to do with technique. But um, because we're doing with triads and one diminished chord, we're doing with groups of three and in one instance, a group of four. So I was playing triplets and then in minor triplets and then for diminished 16th notes, augmented back to triplets. And I find that that's a really difficult subdivision change to make, to be playing in triplets and all of a sudden 16th notes and then going back to triplets. It's hard to keep them even, it's hard to subdivide ahead of time because you're playing in three and then four. Um, so not to rush them, not to slow them down. You, you probably heard in the example I was struggling a bit at a certain point. So it's a really good subdivision and rhythmic exercise as well, which is a really cool added benefit. Um, also it's if you're able to get comfortable enough and know your triads and chords well enough that you can actually do this exercise through all 12 keys, it's an incredible all-around workout for your breath support, for your embouchure. Like I just played through three or four keys there and, and I was already kind of out of air, right? It's, it's, a, it's a really good workout. Um, for that, you need tons of support. Um, 
yeah, I mean, there's not much more to say about that. I guess the, sometimes what I do for, um, you know, if I want to cause myself some extra pain, um, rather than breathe through my mouth, I know we're supposed to breathe through our mouths when we take air, but sometimes I'll choose to breathe through my nose if I can. That way I'm keeping all my embouchure set and not moving. And so it adds an extra degree of kind of a workout for your chop muscles. Um, so yeah, to get through it, all 12 keys without actually taking your lips off of the, off of the mouthpiece. That's, that's a whole other level of workout there. And then of course you can add um, articulation aspect to it. So I tend to do that like I did there where everything is slurred because I find it um, really dif difficult and it focuses the air, especially if you're playing down in the low end, B flat major, B major, C major. Um, slurring, it's really making sure you're supporting your air and filling up the horn. But you know, you could do it all staccato, you could all tongue every other note, you could do it all legato. So there's that other aspect that you can bring to it. But all in all, it's a really great exercise that takes care of many different things, right? It takes care of our sound, it takes care of our breathing, it takes care of our chops, it takes care of our subdivision, it's training our ears, it's doing multiple things, this one simple exercise. So I hope you enjoy it and I hope you try it out. All right, so now I want to talk about the other exercise. This one is a, uh, a seventh chord exercise. So um, it's dealing with the major diatonic system, minor diatonic systems. Okay, so if you don't know what that is, it's basically if you take a major scale and you stack chords on top of each note, then you have the diatonic system for that scale. So if you stack above C, you have C, E, G, B natural. There's your major seventh chord. We go to the next note in the scale, D. D, F, A, C natural. We have a D minor seventh uh, chord. We go to E, E, G, B, D, another, uh, another minor seventh chord. So that's, that's, simply, that's simply it. It's just, it's, it sounds fancy, I guess, music theorists. And the scholars needed, needed to make it sound uh, more than it is. But basically, it's the chords that we build off of each note of the major scale. Okay? Simple as that. So here's how this exercise goes. <laughs> So that's, that's simply it. It's going up the C major chord, going down the D minor chord, going up the E minor chord, going down the F major chord. But it's, um, you know, it's quite difficult. I really uh, encourage you to do it through the entire range of the horn, as I did there. I think I messed up at the top. I didn't go all the way to the high F, but basically the entire range of the horn, because of course we need to be able to do all these technical things through the entire range of the horn. But that's it, and then doing it uh, through all the keys. So it's a great way to work through a key center, obviously. It is, um, you know, we're tackling multiple chords at a time, right? We're, talk we're, we're, we're doing major chords, we're doing our minor chords, we're doing, uh, you know, half diminished chord, we're doing a dominant chord in the mix. So you're tackling most every chord that you're going to... Um, come across if you do this through all 12 keys. Uh, of course, it's unbelievably technically challenging. Um, it's helping us to understand a little bit the theory behind a key center, the relationship of the chords within a key. So that's really cool. I think, um, you know, there's, uh, there's lots of benefits, of course, always. Uh, if we're linking them and doing multiple keys, it's going to be a great chop workout. Obviously, it's a, you know getting getting through the entire range of the horn like that. It's hard to do it in one breath. It's it's a, it takes a lot of support. It's a great breathing exercise. So chop building, breathing, getting the technique together in multiple keys, and then of course we can do it. Um, you know, we can vary the articulation. So that, that time I chose to do it all slurred, like, like the other exercise. Let's try it a different way. 
So we can change it up. We can do a bunch of different things in different ways. So yeah, all the keys. Uh, what I would also suggest, if you can get through all the majors, do the minors. So the one based off of the minor, um, the melodic minor scale, uh, ascending, like the jazz melodic minor. So one, flat three, five, natural seven. I think it's beneficial to do those arpeggios, and also off of the harmonic minor. So um, it's going to be the same going up. Uh, one, flat three, five, major seven coming down, though. You know, one, flat six, four, two. So it's a little bit technical, a little more technically challenging doing that, and it's also a good ear workout as well. Because, um, you know, you hear, especially, you hear guys like Joe Henderson. I mean, it's that. Being able to play your up arpeggios going up and going down really smoothly, really fast. It's a great, great uh, sound. And being able to do it, it's going to help you delineate chords in, in different ways, especially if you're playing um, by yourself, solo saxophone. So it's cool. I am the Saxophone Oracle, and that was our little arpeggio boot camp. So two great exercises, triads and the uh, diatonic systems. I encourage you to make these part of your practice. I hope you find the information helpful and useful. If you do try these, put a comment. Let me know what you think. If you have any saxophone questions, jazz improvisation related questions, send me an email. Um, if possible, I would love to address them in uh, future videos. OK, so please remember to like, share, and subscribe. Tell your friends. As always, the exercises I'm showing you here today, I'm making available for a free download on my website, uh, free PDF downloads. So come check that out if you'd like. And I wish you happy, happy practicing. Bye for now from the Saxophone Oracle.